Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now you may have heard of open source. You may even know that Android is based on open source. And you may have heard of a license called the GPL. Sadly, you may also have learned that some companies don't respect the GPL license. So what is all this about and what does it mean for us? Well, please let me explain. Now, whenever a programmer writes a program for any platform, they start by typing in the programming language into a text file. And this text file is known as the source code. And the source code is then goes through a compiler and out the other end pops an executable, the program you actually sort of double click on or you tap on to run inside of your PC or your laptop or your smartphone or whatever. Now there are two ways of which software can be developed. One is a proprietary closed system, which means that you have programmers, they write all the code and everything remains closed, everything remains private and secret to that company, and they are just ship the binary, the final executable. So if you think about uh, companies like Microsoft and uh, Apple and Adobe, when you run their programs, when you run Office, when you run Premiere Pro, you're only just running the uh, executable they've given you. And that plays an important part in the ecosystem that we have today. But there's an alternative way to developing software, which is called the open source model. And with the open source model, after you ship the final executable to the user, you also ship the source code and say, here is the source code that we use to create this product. Now, just because you ship the source code doesn't mean it goes into the public domain. It means that you can attach a license to it saying, these are the conditions for this source code that we have put out there for you to see. Now, there are two main types of licenses that govern how this source code is controlled. The first one is called the GNU General Public License, the GPL. And basically, the GPL is a social contract between the users, those who actually use this software, and the developers, those who develop the software. And the contract is this. We'll give you the source code. You can run it. You can modify it. You can study it. You can change it. You can ship it and develop it and send it off to other people. You can do what you like, but with one condition. And that condition is that the changes you make to the code also has to be shipped on in the next stage. And what that basically does, it protects the developers that their work remains always out there under the GPL. And it will always be under the GPL because every project that is based on that, that continues that, that develops that, also remains under the GPL. Now there is an aspect of the GPL that sometimes catches people out, and that's this. If I write a million lines of my own proprietary code, I have put a lot of effort into it and I wanna ship a final product, but I include GPL code inside of it, then actually under that license, all my code has to be released under the GPL. You can't mix proprietary software and GPL software together. Now, because of this, it's actually sometimes come under quite an attack. In fact, in 2001, Steve Ballmer, who was then the uh, CEO of Microsoft, said that Linux, because of the GPL, was like cancer and everything it touched was infected. Now, actually, that's not really true, but the point he's trying to make is that you can't mix GPL code and proprietary code together. It's just unfortunate that he used those kind of terms. Now, mainly when developers have mixed the code together by mistake, as soon as it's pointed out, they remove the GPL code and write the code themselves so that they can continue shipping their product in a proprietary fashion, and that's absolutely fine. Now, there's a second type of license, which is a much more permissive license, and the most popular one is called the BSD license, and BSD is for Berkeley Software Distribution, which comes from the University of California at Berkeley, and that was used for one of the original versions of Unix that was shipped. Now, under the BSD license, it says you can do whatever you like with this code. You can modify it, you can change it, you can improve it, you can run it. The only condition is that if you distribute it my, uh, further on, you need to maintain the notices that say this was originally developed by this user and that uh, you have modified it. And that basically means you just have to keep the copyright notices intact inside of the program. And in fact, because of its permissive use, you find BSD license source code all over the place. It's included in Mac OS, it's included in the iOS, it's included in lots and lots of places. In fact, if you open up the acknowledgements file inside Mac OS, there are pages and pages and pages of acknowledgements that are basically just reproductions of this BSD license code that acknowledges that some of it was written by this person, some of it was written by this, and it's pages and pages and pages of it. But the point is this permissive license allows you to do whatever you like. You can mix it with proprietary software code and it, there's no consequence, just as long as you acknowledge where you got that code from. 
Now the other license to be aware of is the Apache 2.0 license and that's because the majority of the Android open source project is licensed under the Apache 2.0 license. It is a permissive license like the BSD license and basically says you can do whatever you want with it uh, but it also grants the, everybody a worldwide royalty free right to use that software. And because Android is based on that, that's why companies like Samsung and LG and Sony and whoever can take the Android source code and produce their own version of Android. And nobody comes knocking on their door saying, hey, give us the source code for how you tweaked Android. Give us the source code for how you implemented that feature because they don't have to because that is the license that Google intentionally chose for Android. Now, while the Android framework is under Apache 2.0, the Linux kernel that runs at the heart of Android, that interface between the hardware and the rest of the framework is actually licensed under the GPL. Now, if you want to understand what role a kernel plays, I have a video all about kernels, which I recommend you watch here, and I'll link it just up here. Now, because it's under the GPL, it basically means that any company that uses Android with Linux has to publish their changes also under the GPL. Now what happens is sometimes there are OEMs who ship Android handsets, which means they have developed a handset, they're using Linux, they're using Android, and they are selling these for commercial gain, for profit, and they're not publishing their changes to the Linux kernel, which means they are a GPL violator. Now, of course, there are a whole bunch of legal reasons why this is not good because it is a license that they accept when they start to ship these products. But actually, the more important thing is that this is a social contract. And the social contract is simple. These companies have stood on the shoulders of giants, people who before them have developed for 20 years now the Linux kernel and they have sweated and sometimes I'm sure they've cried and they have banged their head and they have worked on this Linux kernel and they have developed this amazing system that we use today and the majority of the contributors have not been paid. They've done it in their own free time doing it because they wanted to do it. And when an OEM comes along and starts building a handset, building a product and starts selling it for profit and the chairman's getting rich and the shareholders are getting rich and everybody's doing what they're doing from a commercial point of view and they're not shipping back their changes, they are breaking a legal contract, yes, but they are breaking a social contract. And when you break a social contract, you are eating away at the very fabric of society. You're eating away at the very fabric of community. It becomes a social injustice. How come a guy who worked 10 years ago writing a piece of the Linux kernel in his own free time, how come they get to stand on his shoulders and they don't even bother to respect the license that he freely, or she, gave that source code into the open source community? So companies that break the GPL are actually companies that are unethical and immoral. It's not a big thing. All they're asking is you've got all of the Android fr framework for free. You've got all of that software for free. You've got all this compatibility with the Play Store and all these things for free. All they're asking is that the changes you made to the kernel at the very bottom get published. And if you can't sum up the energy just to publish those changes, then there's something seriously wrong with you. So to sum up then, open source is a model whereby people who write code publish it in, uh, out there for people to see. But that publication is governed by a license. And there are different types of licenses, GPL, BSD, Apache 2, there's other ones like Netscape and Mozilla and MIT, there's a whole bunch of them. But the main principle is that if you're using the GPL, the requirement is that you publish your changes. We could put it another way, freely you have received, so freely you must give. And a company that can't even respect that one ethic needs to take a long, hard look at who they are and what they're doing. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. It's better if you hit that uh, bell icon there so you get a notification every time we release a new video. And last but not least, please do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.